very few. Hello. Hello. Did you just basically rejoin our call? Yeah, it's recording, so I don't give a shit. Fuck it, it works. Hey, George, it's not delivery, it's a porno. (laughs) I loved it, too. I really did. You love that meme I put up? That was great. That's the best meme I've seen in a long time. That is great. I'm amazed I hadn't come up with that one. <laughs> I can't believe... I mean, I can't believe I didn't think of that, like, ten years ago. I know. <laughs> it's if, so easy. <laughs> people listening, if you don't know, there was this meme going around uh, where this guy's delivering a pizza, and it's obviously a porn scene, and it says, it's not delivery, it's a porno. <laughs> which is, of course, spoofing the DiGiorno commercials, but it's... It's an God, A+. Plus. DiGiorno is good fucking pizza. What an A-plus joke that is. Well done to whoever created that meme. Well right. done. You win. You, <laughs> you win. Mr. Too much time on his hands. You no win way. the internet. You win. The interwebs. <laughs> Actually, I saw something funny the other day where somebody said, uh, they said something about the internet, about, uh, they, they don't see many assholes on the internet. They go, I'm on the internet all the time and I don't ever see assholes. And one guy left the best comment. He goes, you're spending too much time having a life. <laughs> it's like letting him know you obviously aren't on the internet very much because the internet is nothing but assholes, including us. Of course, true fact. We are like the three amigos of assholes. It's fun to Chevy Chase. I don't know. We'll figure that Not out. Not me. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd be the Chevy Chase, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry. I still want to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm talking hey. about the character of the hey. three amigos. Are you crazy? Don't make me I'd make be you Martin. lucky day. <laughs> I'll make you. I'll make you Martin Short, George. Don't make me. Did you think Chevy? You. you think Chevy Chase isn't doing anything? The fuck was the last time Martin Short was in? Some, oh, that's right, Santa Claus Wait. Three. No, no, no. He is the Cat in the Hat, isn't he? <laughs> like a, the animated show? Or something? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, that was. A, Oh, yeah, you have kids, so you watch that stuff, don't you? <laughs> Actually, I don't really watch that one. I just remember seeing that and being like, that's Martin Short, isn't it? Because <laughs> I, I was at, a, I was at like, my uh, nephew was being born, and I was in the hospital, and I saw the cartoon on and I heard it, and I was like, wait, is that Martin Short? Yep. It's like, it's like, dude, you're doing voice acting now for a TV show? You used to a, be in movies, man. A pretty crappy children's TV show. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, if it was a great show, like, I wouldn't, I'd be like, oh, cool. But... A Cat in the Hat TV... It doesn't even make any sense, a Cat in the Hat TV series. I mean, we understand why Gilbert Godfrey did, uh... Affleck? No, 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 not oh. the Affleck. Uh, oh, the, the shit show. He was that weird-looking bird. <laughs> yeah. Gilbert's career was, you know... And, and, I mean, he was always a dog. He would do anything for money. <laughs> well, it's not like he had the looks for the camera. That's true. It's very yeah, that's okay because he makes me laugh, so I have accept ever, it. Have you ever heard his real voice? I thought that was a real voice. It was his real voice. It's not. It's freaky as shit. Some, somebody said it to me one day. He 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 just did that voice to be a comedian, and then he just kept doing it all the time. You can yeah. find like a video on YouTube of stuff his original voice before he started doing that, and he has like a very calm, like deep sounding voice. <laughs> He's not the. He doesn't sound like a uh, disgruntled Jew all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's just like a. That's just like a voice he came up with as a comedian, and I guess it just does it. It's all. stuck. I guess he just does it all the time, and he's just just used to doing it. Always now. in character. I'm okay with that because seriously, that shit it, it cracks me up. I don't if, care. If you just start to, if you just start talking British right now, you'll be you'll be British in three months. It doesn't take that long, even. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll just start talking. You just start to have that accent all the time, and nobody will be able to tell the difference anymore. We'll all just think you're British. I've I've met people who do that. Actually, they go to England and they think that because they've been to England, they can now have a British accent, so they just keep it. <laughs> I know guys who've done that to pick up women, and it worked. Like, oh my god! Women have something about the foreign accents. I don't know what it is. If you're a dude and you go to the bar and you can pull off a British accent, you can get yourself some tail. It's not impossible. It's because women are attracted to British men for their voices. Obviously not for their looks. Because no. most British for their, men... For their teeth, I mean, seriously. Matter. 
Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, there are there are attractive British men. I, I mean, no homo, but <laughs> no. There, there's the Paul McCartneys of the world out there. You know, there was Prince there was, William, isn't that his name? Prince William. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> also, I always say the British. They have like the ugliest women. Like every everywhere in the world I can think of, there's there's a lot of attractive women. Yet and yet you love Emma Watson with a fucking fiery passion. I do, but nine times out of ten, when I ever see like video of over there and I see British women, I'm like, oh. Oh no, I agree with you. They're like but, the ugly I mean, version. They're like the ugly American chicks, but with women. except it can't be denied. This is the funny thing: is regular British women hideous, but when you have a hot, hot British woman, movie star, she's hotter than any other woman. That's a fact. But she's she becomes hot. she becomes a movie star because there's so few of them. Yeah. Oh man, I was talking Except to this hot. this guy. He's a friend of a friend, and he was saying that his good buddy married. A Chinese girl that has a British accent. That's the most fascinating thing ever. I'm, but I'm not sure. How if, hot is that? <laughs> that is sexy. I'm sitting here, I don't know if I'm turned on, but I might be. <laughs> if you think about it the right way. I mean, you can't think of it like she comes in and she's like, Oh, hello there, I love you. Like a horrible voice. <laughs> give her the Emma, give her, give her the oh, Emma Watson. That like, is the London. Like she's the worst. The London. Like the worst mix of like an Asian voice, like me love you long time, and a really bad British accent. And you're like, oh god. Hey, governor. Yeah, if you imagine it that way, it's horrible. <laughs> Fucking yeah. awful. Just, you just want to put the, your dick in a blender and just get rid of it. <laughs> the topic of the hot black British chick came up, and we're like, yeah. I've seen that a lot. Scar- actually, it's, scary, it's spice. scary spice. Scary spice. Downtown Julie Brown. Scary spice with Eddie Murphy's baby. <laughs> I remember I was watching the Olympics closing ceremony, and they're like, "Hey, guess what? The Spice Girls reunited, and everybody was cheering." And I was sitting there going, Haha, "Nobody cares. Nobody hey, cares. Much, I cared. I was, I was like, oh fuck yeah, baby Spice.'" George was over there like, "Yeah, tell me what you want. I'll tell you what I want, girl. Shit, <laughs> don't ask me that question. Not expect an answer." It's- Girlfriend sitting right there, I was like, oh my god, Baby Spice, welcome back to my life. I don't know if you watched it, Wayne. Baby Spice, she was looking freaking fine as hell at the Olympics. I don't know what I, happened. I'm, I'm serious. And, I mean, the others looked still good. It's not like they were unattractive. She looked, she looked better, though, than she did when she was in the Spice Girls. She was, yeah. I, I, and I sat there, I said, I looked right over at Casey. I was like, I don't give a fuck how much you complain about this right now. Baby Spice got this shit going down. That that tent in my pants is my dick. That's what it is. It's not that my pants are just doing that because I'm sitting in a weird way. No. Baby Spice. Nope. You remember that, shit, okay. remember that shitty movie they made that was supposed to be like a Hard Day's Night Spice World? Spice World? Oh. I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember my sister had that on VHS and we had to watch that shit all the time. And I was like, oh. I was like eight. It is It is one of the worst movies you will ever see. It is so bad. It's just trying to be a hard day's night, but it's not funny or interesting and all that. They're, like, really annoying in it, and it's got all these really... It's like, you know, Austin Powers did all that crazy camera work and stuff that was, like, spoofing old British movies and stuff. And, you know, uh, that 60s, like, uh, psychedelic style, like, when he's taking the pictures and stuff. Those little scenes in between where Austin's, like, doing stuff and it's spoofing that stuff. (laughs) <laughs> the whole movie Spice World is like those parodies, but they're not really making fun of it. They're just doing it, and it just comes off really bad. Like, it's just, ooh. Oh, welcome to Geek Meets World, everybody. Oh, hey, yeah, there's that. <laughs> hey, we we are doing a podcast. Welcome to- oh, yeah, that's right. I, I was watching the Spice Girls to see if if uh, whichever uh, Baby Spice was looking as good as y'all was saying. Wayne, shut the fuck up. You know I don't steer you wrong when it comes to looking at women. Hey, and I'm not a fan of blondes, but she she was looking good. You know, recently I've, I've been more attracted to blondes just based on the fact that I've never been with a blonde. Oh, well, that, that makes sense. I, I don't know. Can't explain it. It's weird. Well, here, here's Yet I'm still not fantasizing about blondes. I'm just watching blonde porn. Here's a, here's, a, here's a little baby spice wallpaper. Maybe you can use it for uh, your own. Don't even, don't even joke, because take, if I do that, I'm going to get smacked upside the head. Take that, Eliza Dushku. So, yes, uh, I agree. Baby spice was looking slamming. Good to know, my friend. Good to know. <clears throat> Man, this has so much to do with our topic this week. 
Oh, I know. Right? We just want all the Spice Girls to die. I mean, it's just... There's one for you. Spice Girls wouldn't care if one of them died. Wouldn't care. I would. I'd be be a little upset if Baby died, but that's not it. (laughs) I would not give a shit if the other ones died. I don't don't really. Especially the one in my life, but I'd like to. Especially the one that's married to David Beckham. Like she's such a bitch. Here's a list of boy bands that I really wouldn't give a shit if any of them died, and they none of them do. I don't get it. Okay, we start off with the one that was big when I was in middle school. Uh. Uh, no, they, that wasn't New even kids, back, so? new kids on the block. Oh, is I that dead? I don't dude. think so. Wait, wait, you want Donnie Wahlberg to die? How dare you, sir? I, I'm not saying I want him to die. I just really wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> he was in the Saw movies. I'm sorry, I have no <laughs> recollection of what you're talking about. Donnie Wahlberg. He was in New Kids. In, he's Mark Wahlberg's yeah. brother. No, yeah. I, I, I know, but I'm saying I hate the Saw movies. Oh well, no, he was the cop I in those movies. Been. That was like in a bunch of them. Okay, so wouldn't care if any of them died. NSYNC wouldn't care if any of them died. Uh, Backstreet Boys wouldn't care J- if any of them died. I would care if JT died, man. That would make me cry a little. Okay, Just, yeah. Really? Yeah, I get really? Have, Mike, you watched, have you watched his Saturday Night Live skits? They're hilarious. Yeah, they were pretty funny. You're, you're right. JT's become a good actor, okay? I dislike him now. Like, I don't like him in back in NSYNC. Yes, he could die. JT by <laughs> himself, I would be upset. Now, Joey, yeah. if Joey died... Hey, Wayne, we didn't tell you. Actually, one of the guys from NSYNC is from Clarion, the town I live in. Really? He was here at a bar one night, and people were, like, posting comments on Facebook going, he's here at the bar, he's fat as fuck now. Oh, my God. And the Applebee's in our town, it's got, like, a bunch of pictures of him around the Applebee's. Nice. Yeah. He, creepy. He's that non of a celebrity that he has to come to a little local bar to get people to realize who he is. That's just, like, a little town. He can't Man. go anywhere fame. He can't go anywhere, like... He could go to any, like, big city or something. Nobody would be like, who the fuck are you? But he comes to this small town, and everybody's like, oh, dude, it's that guy from NSYNC. <laughs> My friend Katie has a picture from with him from ALF. Oh, yeah, I get, yeah, sometimes he's been, I heard he's been in the parade a couple of times. Yeah, it's called, it's called ALF, you motherfuckers. Anybody from Clarion listening? What's <laughs> it called? ALF. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we're on the same page. Oh, we were definitely, don't you remember I was leading the force with that? Alpha no, but I just <laughs> I say it. You're you're backing it up. You say it. I'm backing it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you ever told Wayne about it. I know nothing of this. Okay, uh, before we get into our topic, I guess I could tell this story. The town we live in, there's this parade every year. Well, not just that; it's a festival. It's the Leaf Festival because people come from all around the world. I don't know why to come see the leaves change in uh, this area, and it's called uh, the Autumn Leaf Festival. It's in, hmm. it's in Clarion, Pennsylvania, and a lot of people come to it. It gets crowded, and all these food vendors come with, like, carny food. And, Dude, thank <laughs> God I'm getting a Quaker steak here. Um, and really. they open up all these little shops and stuff, and the town gets really busy for, like, a week. It's just packed with thousands of people come. It, you know, it's you kind of, never you don't want to go to the bar during this week. Yeah. You know, mm. Pennsylvania, there's, there's festivals all across, so, you know, this is the festival for this town. And they have a big parade, uh, you know, so... Everybody, everybody who talks about it calls it ALF, you know, Autumn Leaf Festival, mm-hmm. and that's what all the college kids at the college here call it. Well, then, I found out when I lived here after a couple of years, I called it ALF, and this local guy, uh, I won't name him, but we hate him, uh, <laughs> he jumped my shit saying, you know, like, no, it's ALF, and I was like, what are you talking about? And then he was like, it's ALF, that's what we all call it, all the, all the other people call it ALF, he goes, all the locals call it ALF, and I go, well, why do you guys call it ALF? And they're like, because... Because it's an acronym, and that's how you pronounce it. And I go, I don't think that's how that works. So uh, I went in this, like, what was it, like a month-long war with all the locals of Clarion? You know, and for that matter, NASA is an acronym. Yes, like, that's what we say. We say NASA. <laughs> so we got, into a, we got into a huge fight for like a week uh, with these people because all the locals were like – and my, my opinion was – just let people say what they want to say. If you want to call it ALF, that's your business, but let people call it ALF. Because if you call it ALF, the locals will jump on your ass. They were in fault here, in my opinion. You know. So my yeah. argument was just like, let people say what they want. So it eventually just came to this bull where I just had to do it. So I showed everybody that was like in the argument a video from Penn and Teller's bullshit where Penn explains to people the difference between an acronym and an initialism. Initialism... <laughs> is when you initialize uh, something, like abbreviate it, like FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, an acronym is when you pronounce an initialism like a word, like 
ALF, the TV show, Alien Life Form. There you go. Or Scoopa <laughs> or Laser. And it just – he named all these ones. And then I showed them that, and I go, not only is your argument shitty, you guys are being assholes, I had to prove to you that you were all trying to use English. And they were claiming that the English teacher at the high school was even supporting them. And I'm like, well, then he's a shitty English teacher, or you guys, right. are, you guys are just making this up. And uh, I mean I, I still am hated by many of the locals in this town because of my – starting the shit but <laughs> why is it such a big deal it's like, that's that's what pissed me off about it they made it such a big deal that i made it an even bigger deal just to represent how ridiculous they were it's funny you mentioned uh pen and teller because i actually watched a i posted a video clip of pen i uh, saw that <laughs> did you watch it it was pretty yeah fucking funny. i did watch it i watched it. he has he has a thing on youtube called pen says where yeah. he gets on like every day and talks about things that are going on in his life it's really interesting yeah, he's a he's a very interesting dude. He's a very <laughs> smart guy too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I but I, I always I always like Penn and Teller bullshit. Sometimes sometimes I didn't like Penn and Teller bullshit because I really thought they were they were a little one sided sometimes. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Like some some episodes, uh, like there was an episode about breastfeeding where they tried to make an argument that this woman she couldn't breastfeed in a Toys R Us, even though the employee told her we have a place in the store for you to go do that. You're not in the public. And mm-hmm. she got mad, and then Penn says, well, we don't have to shop at your store. And my thing was like, wait, you're saying that this store is in the wrong because they told the woman she couldn't breastfeed in the public, even though they have a place inside the store open for all mothers to come breastfeed their child in privacy? I was like, how is the store in the wrong if they made a special place? But That's- you don't understand. Women breastfeeding is licensed to flash their boobies. That's no. You don't get it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, that was my thing, and they were they were just trying to argue their point with the uh, you know breastfeeding in public. But I'm like, well, you can't attack the Toys R Us if they built a place for the women to go do that. That's like that's like telling somebody they can't smoke in your store, but there's a place you put in your store for people to smoke at. That's that's fair if you do that. I mean, then that you give that person rights. And uh, well, you would think most women would rather go to the private place. Yeah, but... she made a big deal about it. And she was gonna like sue the Toys R Us, and I was like, you're just trying to get money and pen. Penn and Teller with with her on this, and I, I, I didn't. I there was a few episodes, and there was sometimes you could tell that they did that Michael Moore thing where they would manipulate something to make it look more the way they wanted it to. Even oh yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Michael Moore fan, but he does that. Oh, of course. Where they edit things together, uh, you know, propaganda style to make it look like you know uh, what we're saying is they they get really dumb people to represent the other side of the argument. Yeah, that's always a good way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they get like the dumbest people to represent the other side of the argument, and then they sit there and they make themselves look all intelligent. But uh, they were going to do a last episode where they were going to call out themselves on all the bullshit they've done over the show, but they never got to do it because the show got canceled before. Ah. Uh. Surprises I really, me that that show got canceled. It was the longest running show on Showtime. It had the most episodes. Wow. And uh, I, I really wanted to see that because they always talked about they were going to go through the whole show and point out every time they did something that was bullshit. <laughs> I was like, if you do that, everything is forgiven. And right. then And then the show got canceled, and I was like, oh, that probably would have been the best episode. Definitely. Just a reversal on the whole play. Um. Anyway, if people want to know what we're talking about this episode of Geek Meets World, it's a very funny and wonderful subject that you often talk about when you, you know, take your kids to preschool or you're uh, at church. You know, typical typical dinner talk. Uh, death. Uh, typical dinner talk. Yeah. Every time I'm having a nice uh, dinner with my family, you know, uh, looking over my hamburger helper, I, I bring up death, you know. Hamburger helper is going to speed the process along. So, remember when Grandma died? (laughs) Remember when Grandma died about a year ago? Yeah. I choked her with a biscuit. (laughs) I just wanted to let you guys know that. I just, you know, we were having this dinner, and it was all good, and nobody was arguing, so I figured I'd bring this up. The biscuit? The death of Grandma. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh... You're probably wondering, why are you guys doing a subject on death? Well, because, believe it or not, a lot of geek things, uh, movies, TV shows, video games, comic books, uh, characters we love have died. And it's affected us emotionally and uh, surprised us. And um, we're kind of going to talk about how why it affects us so much, why fictional characters 
dying is a big deal to us because we never even... Not necessarily fictional characters, but, you know, people it, in general. In yeah, we've gen- got some real ones. We've got some real ones. we got some we've real ones. Heroes that have died. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, some people that we really loved. And if you're wondering, yes, this is because of the recent death of director Tony Scott, the famed director of Top Gun and True Romance and uh, Man on Fire. I was going to say, you better say Man on Fire because uh, it is my favorite uh, fucking movie on that list. Un- unstoppable... Uh, uh, and well, well, you haven't seen True Romance, though, right? No, I've not. But what? If you saw True Romance, you gotta go watch it right now. George, all I have to say is Tarantino wrote it. Yes, he did. He sold that screenplay. It was his first he, script um, they ever wrote, Natural Born Killers. Natural Born Killers, and that's how he got the money to make Reservoir Dogs. That's the first movie he ever wrote was True Romance, uh, and um, just just a bunch of he's I mean he was an inconsistent director he made some bad movies Tony Scott don't get me wrong I mean I think Top Gun's horrible movie yeah it it, it is it, yeah and he made <laughs> he made Days of Thunder which is really cheesy and I mean he was he was he was a director for hire but he did make good movies like Man on Fire and and, and you know uh, True yeah, Man on Fire is seriously a fucking work of art yeah he, Unstoppable was good too I liked Unstoppable yeah he made he's made good movies but he's definitely I wouldn't say he was a, a great filmmaker. He was a very good filmmaker who sometimes made a really, really damn good movie. But I think he was only as good as the script he had. He was never – and he had a really weird style. He did this like over-the-top visual style that sometimes helped the movie. Like with True Romance, it's really cool because you got Tarantino's script with this really good dialogue. Yeah. Um, but then when he directs a movie like – Top Gun that's got a horrible screenplay. He just makes it worse with his over the top style, and it just kind of gives you. Even though Top Gun made a shit ton of money, that doesn't mean it was a good movie. No, it does not. Um, he killed himself. He jumped off a bridge. Uh, it was, it was pretty hardcore. He's the brother of Ridley Scott, the famed director of uh, Alien, Blade Runner, Prometheus, recently Gladiator. Yep. Um, and uh, wait, who? Who directed the original Conan? Uh, shit. Uh, Nick. Uh, got Apparently, it. no one important. No, he was. He was. He was an important director at the time. He did. Uh, he did. Uh, he did Red Dawn. Um, Red Dawn. I like. I like that. I have he's to the director of Red Dawn. I can't. God, I can't remember his name. He was a really good, like, old school director back in the eighties and seventies. And John John Milius. He uh he directed Conan, Red Dawn, and let me see let me see what other stuff he did. He worked on a he worked on the screenplay for Apocalypse Now <laughs> and, and, and the Hunt for Red October. He was mainly a writer that I'm seeing here. He mostly wrote he like he wrote Dirty Harry. He was a he, I guess he was more of a writer than he was a director. But he ended up uh, he was the director of the first Conan the Barbarian movie. Which is still the best Conan the Barbarian movie. Oh, yes. Yeah, without a, doubt. without a doubt. And I will say till this day, has one of the top ten best music scores you will ever hear. Oh, dude, I used to have that on my phone. I would listen to it all the time. If you go, I used to post on YouTube, if you go listen to that score just by itself, separate from the movie, it is one of the best pieces of music. Dun, 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 yeah, it is phenomenal. George, I, George, did you ever listen to that when I put it on like Facebook? I might have. You got you got to go like after we do this, go on YouTube and just type in Conan OST, and there's like a thing put together of all the music sampled together in like ten minutes. And it's like some of the best music you'll ever hear. It ranks up there with like some of the best John Williams stuff. Um, but anyway, let's 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 talk about death a little bit because uh. Uh, there's somebody. Uh, I got one in Conan. Conan's dad, man, and mom, getting killed right in front of his eyes. That was hardcore. He killed my family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want revenge. And then they fucking crucify him in that movie. I am the wellspring from whence you flow. I love that we're just Contemplate dropping back. This I love that we're talking Conan woe. tonight. Crucify him. <laughs> Wayne, I love you. You drop this of Conan in here. I love Conan. Conan's one of my favorites. I, I hate of all. it. That new movie came out, and I was so excited because it's uh, you know, uh, the dude from Game of Thrones. Yep. But man, that movie is fucking horrible. 
I had no desire to watch it again after watching it. It is really, it's just a really mediocre. Like, and the fact that you have to say that means I have to throw out my fa- my love for Drogo. Drogo was awesome. He was a he good was casting bad-ass. choice as Conan. I mean, he I'm was. not. Although he plays, it was not his fault. He basically has played Conan though in everything he's ever been in. That's true. He plays that role in everything. But it, it's unfortunate because if, if Game of Thrones, if they would have put the same attention and, and intelligence in Conan as they do in Game of Thrones, you could have made a really good new Conan movie. Um, Definitely could have. I mean, I, I I mean, I really like Conan now because now that he you know has the show on TBS since he got you know he done with NBC, um, and you know <laughs> Conan has to pray to the god Krom to give him the power to defeat Jay Leno, but uh, <laughs> I still. I know. I just did that. <laughs> that just happened. Uh, but, uh, anyway. In case anyone's wondering, we did have a topic. Yeah, death. <laughs> uh, Is this the death of the topic? Is that what we're Yeah, the topic, the topic death means the death of this podcast ever having any focus. <laughs> ever again. Uh, well, I mean, I want to... I know we could just go down a list and name a bunch of people. Like we could go, oh, Spock died in Rathacon, oh shit. But you know, it's. I just want to think, like, why do we care so much? Why do you think we care so much that when a fictional character, or even somebody that was played a hero, like who, like when Christopher Reeve died, who played Superman, why does that hit us so much? Even though we never met that person, you know, we we. I mean, I've I've gotten to tear. I mean, heck, when uh, Spartacus died, George was fucking destroyed. We were really mm. upset about it. If, I think if I had started watching the show before he died, I probably would have had more of an emotional attachment. But I found out he was dead before I ever started watching it. You know? Oh. And, uh, you know... I was really it, fucked up about it. Yeah, you were. You were really upset. And I, I just... It made me think. I was like, why do we care so much when these people die? I mean, they don't... We didn't We didn't know them and stuff, but we that we do. We really care. Uh, you know, you, you could say somebody in music when they die, but they had an effect on your life. Like when John Lennon died, that affected a lot of people because his music, you know defined the way you look at life in a lot of ways. Um, right. but, but a character, I don't know if it's just an attachment we get because we love something so much, or even when they're not real, like when, you know, when Batman's parents die, it always feels really emotional to me, no matter how, what kind of movie it's in or what comic book it's in. Right. I really feel bad for Bruce Wayne when his parents die. Um, and I, I don't know why, as human beings, we get so attached to something that could, that couldn't even be real, and yet it feels it feels just as painful as reality does when something like that happens to you. Uh, at least in my experiences, uh, I felt really shitty before when people have died. That I felt the same way about when I had friends die or something, and I was like, wait, you know, uh, when I was when I was, you know, my closest thing with death is that when I was uh, 17, my best friend uh, he killed himself. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, he was living with me for the last two months of his life. And uh, he went home one night, uh, and the next day, you know, I heard he committed suicide. You know, nobody till this day really knows why, because a lot of people commit suicide. They don't really talk about it. It just happens. And, uh, you, you know, you want answers, but sometimes there, no, there isn't any answers. It's just uh, questions. And uh, I've, I, it, that really made me think about death a lot at the time, because I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, shit, you know. How do we how do we face that like mortality like what would drive a person to get so depressed with their life that they would take their own you know like want to not want to live anymore and uh, it's it's kind of fascinating um, you know uh, in Wrath of Khan in particular where they say uh, you know the way you deal with death is just as equally important as the way you deal with life and it, it's interesting when Spock dies in that movie because when Spock dies uh, he doesn't even hesitate to sacrifice himself. Uh, to save the crew of the Enterprise in a situation. And I don't know if it's because of his heroism, but, you know, that death really hits us emotionally. Um, and I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to lose people, and death is a really hard topic to talk about without getting dark, you know? Like, you know, I'll, I'll tell you one that actually got me worse than when Andy Whitfield died. Yeah. was when uh, George Carlin died. Hmm. That that hurt real. I love George Carlin. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to see him, him to have seen him live before he got died, though. That's that's yeah. Well, God, he you hate when somebody dies that was somebody that was interesting that was worth talking. Like like that's why John Lennon died. It hurt so bad too because John Lennon was interesting. 
having him around made, made the world a more interesting place. I would love to see him on TV right now. And you know, me and George talk about we wish John Lennon could be on Bill Maher, uh, right. talking about the election and the and you know all the stuff going on in the world. But he's dead because some crazy guy shot him. Truth is. He'd probably have his own talk show. He wouldn't be on Bill Maher. He, he, I mean, could you imagine John Lennon on the YouTube generation? Every time he would go somewhere, he could film it and talk about it. And uh, I would just – I would love to hear John Lennon talk. And, yeah, that's that's a sad thing when, like, someone like Carlin died. Uh, you know, Bill, shit. I, I found out the night before when he got in, into the hospital. And then the next morning, I was driving my grandmother to work and – they said on the radio that he died at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I just stopped. I was like, no. Fuck that. No. <laughs> Man, he was a damn smart dude. I've been listening to his shit since the early 80s. <laughs> uh, it was so depressing. I don't know. I didn't get that depressed about it. He's not the type of person, you know. I don't think he was scared to die. You know, that's my conclusion. When when I am hurt by the, someone's death, it's mainly a selfish loss. Like, that's how I see it. It's like the reason I'm upset is because they're not going to be there for me anymore, you know? You also have to wonder, though, could you have done something differently? Like, for one, for a friend, if they die, you know? Well, that's a question, but eh, you can't, you don't really want to play that game with yourself. Yeah, no, that's, that's fucking emotional abuse on your own fucking mind. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have run him over, but, you know. <laughs> I did, so I'm not going to dwell in the past about it, you know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have shot him in the face, but since I did, <laughs> my son has this. I don't know where he got it from. If he does something wrong, right, and you ask him about it, uh, you can tell he feels guilty, but he doesn't give you a, a real reason. You go, Barrett, why'd you do that? Why'd you hit your sister with that? Because I did. <laughs> Wow. That's what he said. Because I did. It's like, that's the real truth. That That's why it happened, because you did it. But <laughs> that's not the one I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying this Baby Spice background. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh, uh, that is pretty friggin' damn hot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying. Oh, shit. Okay, we're not. This is not a Spice Girls episode. This is the death episode. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. This is the death of the Spice Girls hiatus. <laughs> oh. Why haven't we? You see, there's something I could use. Uh, why is Randy still there? I think so. Randy. I think he died. If he died, then we're recording for nothing. But wait, we, we're not recording if. He died. Wait, if there's a red icon next to his name, does that mean... No, he's, he's there. Dead? It's showing him there. I think he was Why talking... Why can you about... not hear me? There you there go. You go. What, okay, because I... I haven't... I, was talking... I haven't heard you for about five, ten minutes, and I'm sitting there like, uh, I don't okay. know if he's still here. Okay, my mic must have been a little unhooked, because I was trying to talk for like three minutes, and you kept interrupting me, and I was getting really... I kept yelling. I was like, George, shut the fuck up. And you weren't saying anything? That's awesome. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, not only are you, like, you cock-blocking me, you're ignoring it. You're ignoring me. Ah, I'm just going to keep talking over Randy. That's basically, I felt like you whenever anybody else is on. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Suck I'm, it. I'm sitting there trying to tell this thing about Matthew, and you just keep going on about Baby Spice. And I'm like, what the fuck, George? Jesus. Baby Spice. Actually, yeah, Baby Spice is a much more interesting topic, so fuck you. Well, I, know, I was bringing up how you said your, your son just doesn't give a good answer, and I was saying how Matthew, every time I used to ask him a question about something, he would always just answer with because. And I would joke, say, like, you're going to burn down a fucking house one day, and the cops are going to ask you why, and you're just going to say because. It's just <laughs> yeah. going to be your answer. Well, you know. Because. 
Some people like to watch the world burn. Uh huh. Yeah, God, that that makes you feel better now. For a minute there, I think George was just being a complete asshole. <laughs> yeah, because I'm Josh. I was like, "Fuck you, George." Uh, that's good. That's that, good stuff. <laughs> that was good. That it, that actually ended up working out pretty okay. Um, I was looking up a list. I was trying to look up other people's lists because I was trying to compile, you know, like top ten geek deaths, like in. And I, I was, was trying to come up with that too. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, I mean, you, there's obvious ones you can name, like for a lot of '80s kids, Optimus Prime dying in the Transformers. Yeah, movie. that was a big one. Because you know that was one of the first cartoon characters I can think of that died. Because uh, most cartoon shows don't kill off character, at least they didn't back in the day. Um. And so when, you know, like a cartoon character died, it's like, well, shit. Um, but let's try to focus on some of the really powerful ones. I read some good ones here. I don't know if either one of you are big fans of Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. I don't know that one. Okay, Josh weaned it. Well, then I won't spoil it because you guys should both watch it, so I'm not going to spoil that one. Wait, what are we talking about? Dr. Horrible. Uh, here's one on the list. I don't know if you guys felt like uh, when Sirius Black died and Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Nope, no, I completely agree. I was... I, I, well, I guess it wasn't just because he died. It had more to do with the fact that Harry was really – the whole theme of that book I felt was like – in that movie was Harry was really be coming into his own because it, if you remember, everybody was starting to really dislike Harry, and then he started to get everybody to like him again in order to the Phoenix because he was teaching them uh, how to defend themselves. And then he was starting to really get the idea that he could have a family, which is all Harry ever wanted. And then that fucking story ends with him not having a family anymore. And, I mean, it ends pretty tragically, actually. Yeah. And it's serious Black. I mean, I don't know if, <laughs> if it was just Gary Oldman's performance, but if you really care about that character, you really feel like... He, he really does. You know, I, I think out of all of the characters, he really delivers every time you see him. I would also say Alan Rickman as Snape always did that, too. I, and Snape's death in Harry Potter and the Death of the Alice Part Two is also very emotional because you get that whole flashback where you see uh, that he loved Harry's mother and that, you know, uh, he was being protective over Harry this whole time. My only issue with saying that is that I never, like, for for Snape, it was always, he was a dick. Yeah. So, yeah, he delivered, but you never liked Snape. Ever. Alan Rickman, and so though, you very find good all that shit out. It's you, funny, find, you, you find everything out, and you're like, oh, well, I, always, that, I feel kind of bad. What, what is it, Wayne? That list that you're looking at, that's the MormonGeeks.com list? Yeah. It, the top one on there, or the number 10 on there, I actually read that series, and <laughs> I was going to bring that one up. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, but, oh, that's funny. I mean, I guess I, guess I always give J.K. Rowling a lot of credit, because I, I, I don't know if she thought of him in the beginning, but I was always really impressed that she was able to take that story from the beginning point and take it to that point where you could see uh, Snape's whole background and see how the whole story really connected. And I thought, well, she really thought that out. She didn't just – she just didn't write that to make that have like a twist. She actually thought it out with the whole series. And uh, not enough writers do that, uh, really set their whole long-term story to actually have payoffs. Um, so uh, – Wow, these guys are geekier than us, I think. They made magic cards of themselves. Um, I kind of want a magic card of myself. I have to look at these now. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, no. I, I guess, how do I make the picture bigger? Yeah, as, as long as we're... Yeah. Well, before we get sidetracked and still on topic, I, I mentioned to you, Randy, earlier, I wanted to bring up this. Uh, the Neon Tree song, Hooray for Hollywood. Yeah, because the song is basically about all the re oh, not not just even recent, just a lot of uh, the people in Hollywood that have killed themselves with a drug overdose. Not necessarily on purpose. Some of them, yes, probably, but uh, not all. Well, if they like lived, this. well, if they lived and they were brave and true and they died honorable, <laughs> they died properly. Okay, Josh, calm down. Oh shit, where did I? I? I sent that to you on Facebook, right? Yes, you did. What All right, bringing that? that up. List of people that died from drug overdoses in no. Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I Belushi? got my list. I, shut the fuck up. Uh. I got my fucking list. <laughs> I'll rip your sack off. Don't even fucking tempt me. 
Where the fuck did I put that? You know, that Belushi story is really fucked up because, you know, like, Robin Williams and Robert De Niro were there. And that's just... I didn't know that they were there. That's crazy. That's, like, they were the last people to see him alive. And it's just crazy to think of a coked-out Belushi with De Niro and Robin Williams. Well, you know they were doing coke then. Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. It's just, it's just crazy to think of the three of them doing coke together. Like, that just blows my mind. Okay. We got River Phoenix. Of course. I don't even know who the fuck River Phoenix is. You I'm gonna don't? Be you don't Hold know, on. I, did you ever see Indiana Jones on Last Crusade? There you go. You know Young Indiana know. Jones at the beginning? Not sure I did. Oh, okay. You ever seen Wait, the did. third Indiana Jones movie? Did you see... Okay. He was in Running on Empty. He was in The Mosquito Coast, again with Harrison Ford. I don't think he's seen anything. He's uh My Own Private Idaho. My Own Private Idaho. He was He was basically the Heath Ledger of his time. Where he was that young actor who died that was really great and everybody thought he was going to go places. And no. he, d- he died But he young. had fun places already. He's Joaquin Phoenix's brother. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. Joaquin? Yeah, Joaquin. Yeah, Joaquin. Yeah, he's, yeah, who's Joaquin! Joaquin! <laughs> Joaquin's <laughs> brother! I wish that's how his name was pronounced. <laughs> Honestly, like, that's a lot better. Joaquin Phoenix? Joaquin! I didn't know they were black. <laughs> I learned something today. <laughs> I had no idea they were black. Oh God! Yeah, he's Joaquin Phoenix's uh, you know, older brother. Yes, yes. He he died he died in his twenties. He was really young. Yeah, I've actually never seen anything that he's done. I yeah I well um you should check him out. I think he was... Art of Little Nikita, but I don't remember. Anyway, oh. continuing the list. James Dean. Well, yeah, that that's always one that people are going to list. Well, Although I'm not as sad about that one as everyone else is. Well, I'm just listing the yeah. from song. Corey Haim. Corey Haim, you mean? Haim, whatever. Corey Haim died? Is everybody just, really? What? No, he, he's like, Corey Haim died, like he had no idea. I had no idea. That was all of no idea. A Bogota, we thought he was dead 20 years ago and he's still alive. <laughs> he died in 2010, I guess, March 10th. Yeah, Corey Haim died a couple years ago. Well, but Corey Haim, like, he, that's after he was done being famous. Nobody gave a crap about him anymore. He had had... He had, had him. <laughs> Thanks for throwing it in his dead face. <laughs> hey, he can't... He, hey, Wayne, he's not here to defend himself. Come on. Don't make Corey, El, Corey Feldman send you hate emails. <laughs> Corey Feldman. <laughs> yeah, that kid hit his peak at fucking, like, Eleven. <laughs> He'll send you messages. You'd be like, "Listen, dude, I loved you in the Lost Boys as much as everyone else, but leave me the fuck alone." You suck and are very ugly now. Go away. <laughs> you know what? If I made a list, Corey Feldman would be the only celebrity that I would turn down to be on our podcast. <laughs> I would let anyone else on our podcast, but if Corey Feldman wanted no, to be on, he'd be like, no, he, would be on, he could be on only if he talked about his visits to the Neverland Ranch. <laughs> you know what? If he could tell us shit about that, yes. <laughs> He's a, he's a huge prick like I go to this horror convention every year in Erie and he turned down like something like 8 grand to go to it one year like he thought he was too good for $8,000 wow and it's a it's a convention where all he would have had to have done is sit at a booth while they screen and then be there when they screen the Lost Boys and then that's it He they, w- they were going to pay for the hotel and everything and all he would have had to do is come sign autographs and be there for a screening of the Lost Boys and they were going to give him $8,000 what a douche Right? He can he'll do birthday parties, though. It's on the internet. You can They have that thing where you can do birthday parties. You can get Corey Feldman. You can, like, get him to do, go to parties. Like, you pay him. And I was thinking, wouldn't you love to pay Corey Feldman and then, like, bring him to a party with a bunch of people and have everybody treat him like shit, but he has to put up with it because you paid him? <laughs> like, fuck, um, fuck you, I'm Feldman. not sure if, or rather, which Brandon Lee they're referring to. That's Bruce Lee's son. You, they're talking about the one from The Crow. That's what I was thinking, but Lee's he didn't die of a drug overdose, so I don't know why he's on oh. the list. Yeah, he yeah, died of a gun drugs. prop from the movie. Brain hemorrhage. Exactly. The, the, the... Well, they said brain hemorrhage. No, brain hemorrhage is how Bruce Lee died. Bru- Brandon Bruce, Lee... Bruce Lee may have been using drugs. They're, that's The jury is out on that Brandon one. Lee, they had a gun prop in The Crow, and it, was, it shot out like a thing. Oh, sorry, it does say yes. Bruce on that. I don't yeah. know why it's in... Brandon's, though. 
And Brandon Lee got shot by that gun thing, and then that's they yeah. never they never. Although it makes that movie better that he died, I really can't explain it. But that movie's more interesting because he's dead. It's like he's, I, yeah, it's like his spirits actually, because it's a movie about a guy dying and coming back to life. Yeah. <laughs> so when you watch it, it's creepy because it actually feels like the guy died and came back to life to be in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys love The Crow as much as I do. I love that. No, I do. I think it's. Good. I think it's got one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. Oh yes, it does. <laughs> like we're ta- we're talking like top like twenty easily. Definitely. I'm glad we're seeing the bright side of everyone's death here in this <laughs> listing that I'm giving here. Well, shit, these people died a long. Some of these people died a while ago. One I don't care about as much, but I know Randy does. Michael Jackson, King of Pop, man. I cried that day. I got I got poster. I got right now. I have six posters of him in my room. He Which was isn't awesome. homoerotic at all. <laughs> an awesome performer. Hey man, hey man. I, I I mean I know there's that whole thing with the kids and all that stuff, but if you if you just separate yourself from that, like if you just don't focus on that, if you focus on the man's career and what he did in music, I you don't. Okay, it was significant. Pre creepy Michael, I'm okay with like Thriller but and stuff. Once awesome. you bleach your fucking skin white and go all fucking crazy, I you lose my interest. He had that that the vitiligo. <laughs> yeah, George Reeves. Yeah. George Reeves, okay. But sure. that was wait, 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 that wasn't just drugs. He shot himself in the head. Well, Which, I guess it's just a list of oh, Hollywood deaths, but most of them are uh, suicides by drug. Well, not suicide by drug, just well. Death by a drug. lot of people still think Keith Ledger killed himself because he was well, taking, he overdosed on drugs. I still think. Whichever one of the fucking Olsen twins it was, was did it. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate. Oh, dude, she got she got fucking killed by the Manson people. Yeah, that's right. They cut yeah, her baby out of her stomach. That's I don't know that they went that far, bro. <laughs> no, no, they did. They cut her baby out of the stomach. That was famous. Roman Polanski, that was his baby, and he was just, like filming a movie. And they uh, they cut the baby out of the stomach and like laid it out, and then they used her blood to write the helter skelter on this wall. That's overly disappointing because I mean, God, for one of the older actresses, she is gorgeous. Was yeah, dude, tell me about she it. She was a beautiful woman. Oh yeah. Oh, that was a horrible. That was that was most like probably still to this day like the most fucked up Hollywood murder ever. Even though it's still one of the funniest Family Guy skits ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's horrifying. Like when you read yeah. about the shit they did at that when they did to those people, it's like that's sick. Severely less important again, Brittany Murphy. Well, she was Luann on King of the Hill. Other than that, though, she was, I liked her in Clueless. And it's funny that you guys said it. So here we go to Heath Ledger. Well, that's a that's been the biggest one of the last few years. Yeah. Well, because after he died, he came out with this movie, and he gave, like, one of the best performances we all ever yeah. saw. Yeah, his, his all-time greatest performance is the movie that he died doing. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, he dies, and then we see this performance, and it's, like, one of the top 100 great performances, of, you know. I mean, uh, Freddie Prince. Prince. That I really don't really care about Freddie Prince dying. Uh, he should ever be blamed because he birthed Freddie Prince Jr. And uh, for life, he should be hated for doing that. Really? Dude, if you rewatched any of those old shitty Freddie Prince Jr. movies from the 90s, like Wing Commander. Hey, listen, I've rewatched She's All That plenty of times. That's the only one. <laughs> All the other ones are horrible. He also, he also does voice work now, and it's really bad. And... God, he was horrible in the Scooby Doo movie. Always hated Freddie Prince Jr. Well, yeah. Scooby Doo movie, so yeah, he's pretty bad. The Scooby Doo movie could have been good though if they would have just put. F- I mean, Matthew Lillard was good as Shaggy, but everything else sucked balls. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, that one's pretty. That was pretty sad too. I mean, she did get to fuck John Kennedy, so that's good, I guess. Hey, I mean, yeah, you know, as long as you got a hot dicking prior. I to mean, and if, we're, if we're talking about tragic deaths. John F. Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny you say that. Um, I was cleaning out our attic the other day, well, last week- weekend. Yeah. And my grandmother has the Life magazine issue 
of John Kennedy, like, after his death, and they did the whole publishing, the entire magazine was JFK. Yeah. She has that fucking Life magazine. I looked at that and was like, God damn, that is a fucking piece of history right there. She going Pawn Stars, man. Dude, right? So Rick I mean, it's, but so Rick sadly, Rick it's, it's fucking crinkled and shit, though, and I'm like, God damn it, Grandma, why wouldn't you have kept this in better condition? I want Pawn Stars so the guy Rick on there can lowball you an offer and... Like rip you off. Listen, that's I gotta make some money off this. I'll give yeah. you ten bucks. Yeah. So I can sell it for a hundred. He'll have a guy come in and say it's worth a hundred bucks, and he'll be like, "I'll give you ten right now." <laughs> Man. You know, I don't think he rips too many people off, honestly. He does on some shit, like some of the baseball stuff people bring in there. No, like, no, no. I agree. It, I'm, I didn't say everything. Yeah, I just like, said like he people bring in autographs, like Babe Ruth autographs, and I have a ba- my family has a background in that kind of stuff. And he's telling the people that shit ain't worth anything, and he bids it for like two hundred bucks. I'm like bullshit. That's a load of shit. Even though Man. even though times are bad for being like selling stuff, it's still if you have an just me if you have an autograph of anything like that, if you have like a baseball. Autographed by Babe Ruth. Don't go sell it to a guy at a pawn shop for 200 bucks. You're just getting ripped off. I think I've got Willie Mays somewhere and Jack Dempsey. Those are the only two good ones I got. Jack Albertson. That's the one I'm, I'm throwing out here. Who was Jack Albertson? The... Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He was Grandpa. The first Willy Wonka. The uh, first Willy Wonka. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's kind of sad, but God, he had to be old as fuck when he died. Uh, he was... No, he wasn't... I mean, not old as fuck. But he had to be old. I mean, it's hard to feel... 74. It has to be... It's kind of hard to feel bad when an old person dies. No, I, I understand, but, you know, 74. It's but like, still, hey, dude... I, I, Albert, then he was a good dude. I mean, It's like when was, Andy yeah. Griffith died recently and everybody was upset. I was like, well, Andy Griffith was, what, 80-something? He was in, like, one of the most popular TV shows of all time. Uh, he was... Very loved by everybody his whole career, and I'm thinking he was, he was like 80, 83 or something. I'm like, it's kind of hard to feel bad for a guy in his 80s who had a really successful career that he died. You know? Like, oh, it's tragic. He had a really successful life, and he was old, and he died. Huh. <laughs> the Lizard King. Yeah, Jim Morrison always... He's not dead, George. He just faked his death. <laughs> Natty Wood. Who the Na- fuck is Natty Wood? Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood. Would she? No, I from, don't know. She's from West Side Story. She was Maria. She was in a. Oh, she is super hot. Yeah, Natalie Wood was on those beautiful women ever. She's the one that was on the yacht with uh, Christopher Walken that fell off, and a lot of people think that like they like somebody murdered her. It happened in the. All right. She was a famous actress back in the day. Very beautiful woman, Natalie Wood. Um, sad. Huh, she liked to marry men with the name R, apparently. She was married to the same dude twice, but then the other dude. She was married to Robert Wagner twice, and in between the two marriages, Richard Gregson. Yeah, Robert Wagner, who she was on the boat with, with him and Christopher Walken, and... uh and she felt, and she they reported she drowned. And it's always been really controversial. Like some people think that uh, they knew she died, and they. I mean, I, I I haven't read much about it, but I know it's always been a pretty, you know, uh, controversial thing about what really happened to her. Like if there was some foul play involved with her death. But I can't be certain. I don't. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't like to think of Christopher Walken as bad guy. Yeah, definitely not. No, neither do I. But that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. <laughs> this is true. This was the early 80s. Everybody was doing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> a lot of cocaine. <laughs> you guys already said Belushi. Well, you got to say Belushi. Uh, Janice Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Amy Winehouse. I'm just going to throw them all together. There you go. You're just, just going to throw the 27 Club out there? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, we're naming a lot of celebrities' deaths. Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, it, I mean, it sucks when someone dies, but it's like, you know, there's that period where you eventually, you get over it. But have you ever had that death really affect something for you? Like, when I listen to Michael Jackson now, who I, who I used to 
love. Like, I watched all his music videos. I you still all- love, okay? I know, I love. I walked but- into the store and had fucking a thriller playlist on. No, I know. I, I and it gets just, annoying after the fucking second, and you just let it keep going. I know. Like in my store, I have I put my iPod on, and sometimes my iPod will just keep playing all my Michael Jackson songs, which is a lot. So you have to sit there and just while you're smoking hookah and listen to endless amounts of Michael Jackson. Um, I don't know. It's just, but there was a, like when I listen to some of his music now, I can't enjoy it in the way I used to because now I think about when I hear it is that he's dead. I don't think about how I'm enjoying the song anymore, all that transfers to my head. And that might be because I grew up with him. Like, you know, I wasn't alive when John Lennon died, so I heard the Beatles after. So what his voice spoke to me, it was kind of a, you know, you know, after experience. So I, I knew going in. But when when someone changes your life in a way and then they die, I don't know if it taint like whenever um I mean, it, it does, like, affect The Crow. Like, when you watch The Crow, a big part of that movie, when you watch it, is that you know Brandon Lee died making that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's it's weird how that works sometimes. It, it puts something different on the way you look at something. I mean, uh, it, it, it affects you. Um, recently, they did a really good job in Batman Arkham City, the video game. They have a scene where you go to uh, the alley where Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered, and there's an outline of the bodies there. And you pay your respects. You put you put you put some flowers down, and you sit there as Batman, and you just kind of mourn your parents' death. Huh. It's a nice little moment they put in the they put in a video game. That is thing. cool. And uh, it's a really emotional thing. And um, it, Batman's death's always been one that uh, his parents' death is one that always got me because it's the death of his parents that makes him Batman and drives him to be what he is because he doesn't want anybody else to ever have to go through what he did. And uh, that always kind of went through my life where it was like, you know, uh, I I hope that the people that were lost that were important to me, I hope that I can do whatever I can to keep others from having to, uh, you know, deal with it. Because it's really painful when somebody you care about dies because uh, unless, you know, if you believe in an afterlife or you don't know, you know, you're open-minded about it or whatnot uh, – there's still that sadness because there's somebody that affected your life, and you like my grandpa. He died a few years ago, and I'm really sad because I just liked hanging out with him. We were good friends, and uh, I wish I could talk to him still, you know. But uh, that that's always the sad part when somebody. Uh, we all know about my drinking binge when after my after my mom died. So yeah, yeah. When there's somebody you like being around, and then they're dead, you know, it just kind of. <sighs> Chris Reeve dying sucked though, Superman. I mean, George Reeves died, too. Me and Wayne were actually joking, what was it, last night, that if your name is Reeve and uh, you play Superman, you are going to die. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, bro. There's, there's no way around it. Um, I mean, he his, his death was sad because he was seemed like such a genuinely nice guy, and we just pictured him as... I mean, he is Superman. Nobody else can ever be Superman without us thinking of Chris Reeve. This is true. And, you know, he was a guy that did a lot with his life. I've always heard he was a very nice man, and then, you know, he gets thrown off a fucking horse, and he's paralyzed, and that ends up killing him years later. And uh, that's just sad, because he seemed like a really good guy, and uh, it's it's hard to deal with the death of somebody who played Superman. I mean, shit. Uh, his name alone kind of says it all, Superman. Um... Uh, Superman, childhood hero. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah, as a kid, I watched those movies. I loved I loved Chris Reeve, and that just broke my heart when I already died. I mean, because if Superman can die, what does that mean for the rest of us? Doomed. Yeah, we're doomed. doomed. I believe there'll be a doomsday coming for all of us. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, I mean, uh. I don't know. Talking about people dying is kind of shitty. Uh, let's talk more about right? like, let's talk about more <laughs> let's talk about more fun deaths. What are fun deaths in a movie? Like, what's a death that somebody got in a movie that you were like, "Fuck yeah!" Like, I remember when a Hans Gruber falls off the building in the first Die Hard. I think that's so badass. When like he's holding onto the watch and Bruce Willis takes the watch off, and then you see Alan Rickman just falling down to the ground, and you see his face like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> You know, uh, let's talk, let's make this fun. What were some deaths in a movie that you were like, that was the coolest death? Like, what's the coolest death scene you've ever seen in a movie where a guy died and it was badass? Mm. This is a tough one. It was a uh, fuck- 
I, I won't say badass, but one I like is actually an X-Men First Class when, uh, I, I don't remember his name, the black one, the survivalist. Oh, uh, Darwin. Yeah, okay, Darwin, yeah. Um, whenever... He tries to, like, uh, fight Shaw. Yeah, whenever Shaw throws that energy down his throat and he keeps trying to change to survive to it and it ends up just turning him to ash. Okay, I'm going to make a really bad joke so people listening who get easily offended just, why are you even listening? Uh, uh, they, they established early on that Kevin Bacon's character worked with the Nazis and the first guy he kills in the movie that we see is a black man. <laughs> so I just don't know why they just didn't have him in there say the N-word and, and kill Darwin because that's that's basically what it seemed like to me. Like, you know what? You're black. I was. I'm a Nazi. I'm gonna kill you now. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf <laughs> Wiedersehen. Um, I mean, I've seen some really violent, like, action movies that have some really badass death, like some Hong Kong movies. And well, I'm talking. Of, I was thinking of Itchy the Killer, actually. Yeah, that's just got some brutal deaths. Yeah, uh, that one's good. Um, um, Survivor, the, that one, the, that uh, yeah. movie's got some good ones as well. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, oh, I loved it when Bruce Lee jumped on O'Hara in Enter the Dragon and crushed his fucking yeah, chest. One of the greatest movies ever. Oh yeah, of course. Hey George, <clears throat> what about Kick Ass? Where uh, uh, Frank D'Amico, uh, Kick Ass shoots him with the fucking bazooka. Yeah, <laughs> I love that death. You know, Big Daddy's death really fucked with me and Kick-Ass. You know, it was really jacked. Because Kid Girl, like, she gets there, and she kicks everyone, she kills everyone, and then she, like, tells him she loves him, and he's on fire. It's just the way Nick Cage acts that scene out. Like, you, he really seems like he was on fire. And the way he even does his voice, he's like, Switch to Kryptonite! <laughs> You're like, damn, Nick Cage. Um, yeah, there's plenty. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of what are the greatest movie did because there's uh, like the guy, uh, the bad guy in Commando. Uh, he gets like electrocuted. Oh yeah. Arnold lifts off some steam Matrix. Bennett. Yeah, lifts <laughs> off some steam Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that big guy from the Road Warrior. He ended up being all fat and stuff in Commando. He was the big bad yes, guy in was. Road Warrior. Yeah. 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 I'm actually think I'm meeting him in October. He's going to be at a convention I'm going to. I'm going to ask him. I'm like, dude, what happened? Cheetos? You're going to Horror Fest again. I might be. It's going to be hard because Russell is uh, – Russell works, you know, in all city now. So it's going to be tough for me to go, but I might. The only reason I go is because I got a – For a freaking t- – for a hotel room. Well, I got a free place to stay. That's the thing. If I go, I stay at his parents' house, and it's, yeah. it doesn't cost me anything to go. Then it only costs me like – Last time I went, I think I spent ninety, like ninety something bucks, and I was there for four days. That's awesome. And I ate every day. I met, you know, Norman Reedus. I met, you know, I met the Boondock Saints. I met all these people. I saw like twenty plus movies, and I only spent like uh, ninety bucks, ninety something bucks, and I bought a bunch of stuff too. If I had had to get a hotel, God, I mean, a hotel. Where is that convention? Eerie. Eerie. Oh wow, that's the middle of friggin' nowhere. Well, Eerie's, Eerie's not in the middle of nowhere. Lake oh. Erie, that's like the that's like the like Great Lakes. That's a big tourist town because of the beaches there and stuff. I don't know. I've never been to Erie. I only know one person who has been. Yeah, besides I, you. <laughs> I think I think I think uh, I think over a hundred thousand people live there. I'm not sure, but I think so because because of the area because Erie because you know it's like uh you know Lake Erie is fucking huge, so right. a lot of a lot of people go there to go to the beach and stuff because uh around where we live that's the closest place you can go to I guess to really go like. Get a beach experience. Although it gets cold as fuck there, I've never been as cold. I was in Erie in October, and it was it was so cold. It was colder than it's ever been here where I'm at now. During like December or January, it was so wow. just October. You would come out in the morning, and the, everything would be frozen. And at night, I was sleeping upstairs in his brother's bedroom, his, his brother's old bedroom. I would be wearing socks. I would have on a sheet, a blanket, and then another blanket on over me, and I would still be cold. And they had a heater. <laughs> It was freezing in Erie. It was so fucking cold because, you know, that all that water and wind and shit just makes it cold as shit. Um, Man. Which made it horrible because you'd be in the movie theater watching movies and it would be all warm. And then you would go outside and it would be like, you know, like 10 degrees or something. It would be fucking freezing. 
And, <laughs> you know, you, you'd be like, God, and then you would go to the bar, and the bar would be all warm because there'd be so many people. And then you'd walk out of the bar, and it'd be so cold, and you'd be like, oh, you would sober up really quick, and you'd just feel like shit. <laughs> like, you know, we're at the bar drinking and looking at the bands. I'm like, we're going to have a good night, and then we walk outside, and it's like the coldest you've ever felt in your life. And you're like, oh, fuck. And you got to walk all the way back to the car. Um, yeah, uh... God, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying to think of some deaths where they kill, like, villains in movies or something that are pretty badass. Uh, I always thought it's awesome when Darth Vader throws the Emperor down that thing in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, that was good. Because it was, like, Darth Vader's redemption. You know, when I used to watch it as a kid, I'd get so emotional, like, no, he's killing Luke. Stop killing. Oh. (laughs) I just thought of the best one of all time, you motherfuckers. When the, when the Nazis opened the Ark up at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, oh yeah, that don't, is awesome. Don't look at it, Marion. Marion, don't close your eyes, Marion. And the Dang. Nazis get their fucking faces melted. They get attacked by demon ghost things. <laughs> apparently, none of them read the Bible. You know, that's not to fuck with the Ark. Nope, apparently not. They're like, let's open it. You said it had to be a badass death. I just had to be a death that. Was so like, I'm gonna go. Was with awesome. Ken. Well, I. An awesome death. Okay. It's a mass killing, really. Um, the end of Inglorious Bastards. Oh, with the, when the bomb goes off in the theater. where basically all the bastards die, <laughs> like it's the end of. Yeah. Oh, I'd also say, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool because they're just like they're just shooting the fuck out of Hitler while they're about to explode because they're not even they not even remember yeah. that they got a bomb attached to their leg. It's like no, fuck this. Um, that's what's cool about it. Like in Glorious Just Bastards, saying, it was badass. No, it was. It was definitely cool. Uh, I've got one. I've got one. Doctor Strange Love. Uh, oh, when he writes the, the bomb. The, he Slim Pickens writes, writes the bomb. <laughs> he writes the bomb all the way down. That's uh, why the game type is called Strange Love, Geo. <laughs> uh, when, when, when Private Paul shoots uh, uh, Arlie Army in Full Metal Jacket, the drill sergeant. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's badass, because that whole thing, you slowly see a guy... What is your major malfunction? (laughs) When you slowly see a guy go crazy, and then he fucking just shoots his drill sergeant, you're like, oh, fuck. And then he fucking shoots his brains out right there in the bathroom. That shit is brutal. That was always a hardcore death. Uh, I'll say this, because, because I stand by how much I connect with Bond, with Daniel Craig as Bond. And that would be in uh, Quantum Quantum of Solace. No, not Quantum of Solace. Um, Casino Royale? Fuck. Casino Royale. Whenever What's-Her-Face dies. Oh, Vesper? Vesper, yes. Yeah, when she dies in the water and he just kind of has to look at her. Yeah, because it's so hardcore because all he's, like, he's trying so hard to get her. Your mic's coming in weird for me. So... You know, you guys are kind of weird for me, so I'm going to unplug it real quick and turn it back in. Yeah, I'm assuming it's... I think it was my, I think it was my fault, guys. I think it was my fault. Okay, because, yeah, George's mic was coming in weird for a minute. Now yeah. you're static. I think that's because George unplugged his mic. Oh, okay. It was. Okay, is everything back to normal? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it sounds fine. I don't know what it was for a second. I'm pretty sure it was me, because I, I forgot that I'm running off of a throttled connection down in my basement, and I started to do a torrent. So I think it was eating my bandwidth completely. You shit. <laughs> You're such an asshole, Wayne. <laughs> That's all right. It does that whenever I start playing Angry Birds during a podcast. <laughs> you gotta let that anger out somehow, man. <laughs> it's funny. Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's. I mean, I guess I could Google it and like top ten movie deaths. Uh. And then we could just talk about them. But I was trying to. Th- no, oh, you know what? Movie death here, so um. Can we wait? Can we go back to Conan for a second? I I, I guess George has never seen the original Conan the Barbarian. What? I, oh. I, well, just from us talking about it, I'm just assuming he never got a chance to see it. It's a but must see. There's a great There's a great death at the end. Uh, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger cuts James Earl Jones' head off, and holds it in front of everyone. <laughs> yeah, all the followers that are all like, you know. And then he just throws the head down the stairs, and he's like, "There's yeah. your god now." <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, uh, well, we're gonna talk about deaths, like in just all in general. Uh, I'll go with like, uh, I'll, you know, I'll mention some comic book deaths uh, that really hit me hard, uh, or you know, like TV show deaths. I mean, TV shows probably more than anything, like Lost. 
God damn. They killed everybody. <laughs> Every time somebody Charlie. died. Yeah, when Charlie died, when Echo died, when yep. Locke but mostly died. mostly Charlie. When Locke died. But mostly Charlie. Mostly Charlie. Yeah, mostly Char- Charlie. Well, Charlie's death was just so fucking sad because he had the message on his hand from Penny. Yep. Not Penny's boat. <laughs> it's like, you son of a bitch. That is so fucking brutal. Yeah. Um. Everybody, I mean, yeah, uh, got a... Uh, on the Sopranos, a lot of my favorite characters died. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, right now, you know, Game of Thrones, we got to say it, uh, Ned Stark. Oh, that was awful. Gets his fucking head cut off. <laughs> and you are yep. not expecting it. That death freaks you the fuck out. Like, you rethink the season and you see how Ned fucked up from the beginning and how he got to this point, but you just never thought a show would kill off the main character. Like, yeah. And, no. And it's Sean like, Bean. Why did you- why did you build this character up so big just to kill him? It doesn't make sense to me. Even though Sean Bean dies in every movie he's in. I mean, he was fucking... Poor I mean, guy. Boromir. I mean, yeah, Bob. <laughs> my, my king. <laughs> Boromir's got one of the most brutal deaths because he's just taking all these arrows trying to save the little hobbits. <laughs> yep. Ned Stark. And he just keeps getting shot and he's like... Oh! <laughs> Greatness. Yep. But he had to redeem himself for trying to take the ring. He I think he was just trying to rape Frodo. Frodo. That's how I always looked at that scene. <laughs> I mean, if you watch that scene with that in mind, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm getting echo. Gio, what are you doing? I'm getting I'm echo. I'm not doing anything. What the hell do you mean you're getting echo? I hear echo from... I'm, it's coming from somebody's mic. I'm not getting echo, so obviously it's me. There you go. But I don't know I don't how. have it. It's gone. Oh, no, I still hear my echo. Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> This always happens with your mic, George. Nope. There we go. He stopped it. But yeah. now we can't hear him. That's okay. <laughs> George, ah, we won't have to talk over him anymore. George is being the strong <laughs> silent type. <laughs> yeah, we just don't have to interrupt him anymore. Now we can just talk. Uh, I had I had some good ones. You had some pretty badass deaths, my friend. Well, Boromir was one I definitely wanted to bring up. Goddamn Echo. You're going to have to make you switch to push to talk, George. Is it better? Mm, uh, I still hear it. There's no fucking... I don't know what to... I, we're having some technical difficulties on this, <laughs> this road right now. Okay, you're back? No, he's not. Do you still hear it? Um, do I still hear it? Yes, I do. Suck a dick. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I love if George just keeps on plugging his mic and coming back in. How about now? <laughs> is it okay now? Well, is he using a mic and speakers? Is that why it's bleeding through? I don't think so. I thought no, I'm was- not. I've got my headset on. I have. I didn't change anything from the time that you guys didn't hear echo to the time you did. Yeah, the only reason there would be an echo is because of speakers. Yeah, usually. That's the only time I was getting echoes. Yeah. You wouldn't get it. I still hear my voice in your thing. I hear it when you talk, Randy. I do, I'm too. Not hearing, I'm not hearing mine, though. Uh, then I'm confused. So am I. Yeah, when I... Are still hearing it? I'm not anymore. I'm good. I guess it's over now. Hooray! God, I, I was about to kill myself. <laughs> it's about to be a death on... Death via podcast. All right, so, yeah, Boromir, yeah, that one is definitely a death that needed to be brought up. Uh, yeah, no shoot. Uh, no shoot. Yeah, I'm being nice. This is a PG. Yeah, episode. no shoot. Boy, <laughs> G- boy, G tours. You think so? <laughs> Gee oh, whiz, God. Randy. <laughs> you really make me feel beautiful. <laughs> uh, let's not bring up that nauseating fucking post, too. Uh, we, we'll, we will not speak of that post, and we will not speak of any of those things ever again. We will not bring that into the Fortress of Solitude that we have created here. The Geek Fortress Geek. of Solitude. Um, that is a sexy picture of Baby Spice. I like how you're just still <laughs> looking at pictures of Baby Spice. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see why you wouldn't be looking at pictures of Baby Spice, i got to be honest. I mean, you make a you make a valid point, I guess. I know I do. Okay, okay, I'm looking at some movie deaths right now. I finally got myself got myself a list. Although it's really exploitation shit. Let me get to some hardcore. Oh, oh, when Sonny dies in Godfather, it was always kind of fucked up to me. 
Yes, this is true. When he gets shot the fuck up, just by trying to help his sister out. When Scarface gets taken down with his mountain of coke. Oh, and yeah. Oh, God, you know what? That might be the greatest movie death of all time. Uh, George, please tell me you've seen Scarface. Yeah, I've seen Scarface. Okay, Okay, because goddamn, when Pacino, he fucking, if people haven't seen Scarface, basically, Pacino's so pissed off that his best friend's fucking his sister because they allude to that he wants to fuck his own sister. Because the movie's messed up. He's like, he he fucks over all of his business partners, and at the end of the movie, they just send an army to kill his ass at his mansion, and his sister comes in, like, is, like, just trying to, shooting at him, saying, you know, fuck me, and then she gets killed by all the guys, so then Pacino, with this mountain of cocaine, just shoves his face into it, grabs a huge fucking gun, and says the famous, say hello to my little friend line, and he takes out... To my little friend. <laughs> and he takes out like 50 dudes or some shit with this gun because he's so fucked up on coke. When he gets shot, it doesn't do anything. And then he gets taken out from behind with a shotgun and falls into a pool that says the world is yours, this globe thing. Yep. It is one of the, like, it's not just a badass death because, like, he just he went out like a badass. It's just a badass death because it's just the way the scene sets itself up that everybody around him is getting killed. And he gets so pissed off and everything in his life just fell apart. And all because he didn't want to blow up that little kid. <laughs> yeah, all because he had a conscience for one moment, even though the rest of the movie he's a complete and utter asshole. Yep. Uh, and it is, it's a, it's, is it better to burn out than to fade away? <laughs> uh, and Scarface's question, it's better to burn out fucking in a flame. I mean, it's Bon Jovi going out in a blaze of glory. Man. I mean. That was death. Yeah, that death, that death kicks ass. I, I, I mean, when you even said it, I was just thinking to myself, God, that, I mean, if that movie's <laughs> on, I just start watching it because I wait for, there's only really two scenes I watch that movie for, is the chainsaw scene. Oh, yeah, that's and, good. And the scene, the shootout at the end. The shootout at the end always gets me, because there's parts of that movie that, like, don't work for me. Yeah, they kind of drag in some scenes. Um, ooh, uh, Leon the Professional. That one always, uh, you know, when, uh, he takes out all the SWAT guys, and then fucking Gary Oldman comes and gets him. <laughs> uh, that always that always kind of pissed. Although he blows Gary Oldman up with a fucking grenade, uh, which is pretty badass. Oh, when the Terminator dies in T2, he has Sarah lower him down into the lava. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, now I know why you cry, but it is something I can never do. <laughs> and then he's like, I can't self-terminate. And then Sarah, like, puts the button down, and he gives the thumbs up to the little kid. Yep. Because it's so fucking 90s, and you're like, god damn it. <laughs> but it wasn't over yet. We had to have another Terminator movie. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> in Star Wars. Yoda in Star Wars. Yeah, Yoda in Star Wars. Everybody who died in Star Wars that was a hero. Uh, fuck. Don't strike me down, Doth. I should become more powerful than you could ever imagine. <laughs> um, oh, when, when when Christopher Walken dies in The Deer Hunter. That's pretty brutal. You know, I just downloaded that movie. I have not watched it yet. Then I'm entirely sorry, sir. It's all good. <laughs> I just the shit out of that movie, didn't I? <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> ah, sorry. I guess in this episode it was kind of open game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, uh, when Apollo Creed died in Rocky IV. When hey, I, I brought I mean, that one up last oh, you, night. When Ivan Drago yeah. just beat the shit out of him and Rocky didn't throw the talon to, like, the last... The last, the last deadly punch. <laughs> yeah, he like, looks, did I mention that one last night? I know I thought of that one last night. Because I, I love it. Ivan Drago's just beating the shit out of Apollo and Rocky won't drop the towel, and then he drops it right after the last punch that kills, I, that kills Apollo. Yep. He waits. It's like, man, I'm a really shitty friend. <laughs> Makes for a good movie, though. <laughs> yeah, and then Rocky goes to train, and somehow he's strong enough to fight uh, Ivan Drago for, like, 15 rounds, even though he killed Apollo in only two rounds. And Apollo was, like, his match. <laughs> yeah. Somehow Rocky became uber strong in just, like, a course of a few montages. A few montages in a cabin in the middle of the woods with no weights and no modern equipment. <laughs> yeah, he runs up the mountains. He like fucking. He's training in a barn, and that makes. Listen, he has the eye of the tiger. He doesn't need any of that shit. <laughs> no, no, no. That wasn't the eye of the tiger, though. That, he wasn't using the eye of the tiger. He was using uh the burning heart and uh hearts on fire. 
Oh, yeah, he was. Hearts on fire. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He already had the eye of the tiger. Yeah, he already got the eye of the tiger to be. already in him. So he had the eye of the tiger. Sheen's got tiger blood. <laughs> hey, George, you know we want to do those commentary tracks? We could seriously do a commentary thing for Rocky 3 and 4, and they would be fucking hilarious. Rocky 4 is one of the talking own, about, like, MST 3K style? Yeah, because yeah, we want to do that with the podcast, because to me, Rocky 3 and 4 are two of the greatest, like, bad movies ever made. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. You could just line up the podca- podcast audio with the movie and then... No, that's what we, we, we've been planning on that since we started this. Like, So people who own the movie, they can put the DVD in and then hit play when we start watching it. Like, it's our there. commentary on the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the director. Yeah. Fuck the actors. You want our commentary. We know more than the director. <laughs> we know more than the director knows. It's funny to say that because I'm actually not a fan of watching movies with commentary tracks. Maybe you just haven't never. watched good ones. If I, I, I just like to watch my movies. I don't I don't want someone fucking talking and interrupting me every time I'm trying to enjoy a scene. I'm like really, really hardcore, like ones that I really love, like uh, Blade Runner or... Uh, like I was telling you about those Simpsons commentaries that Conan O'Brien Sim- and all the people on them, and they're, they're great because this, they're in a room just joking, and it's really fucking funny. If I've seen a movie enough times, I don't care. Like if I've seen a movie like... A hundred times. I really don't care if I like watch a comment. Dude, like, I've seen the Breakfast Club plenty of times, but I still can't watch the commentary. See, yeah, I would love. See, I love because if you're studying film, that's a great way to learn about it is by listening to commentary tracks because they explain a lot to you about how like you know story structure works and uh, you know how they did the camera shots and stuff. And uh, sometimes it's just really entertaining just to listen to somebody like when like Quentin Tarantino does a commentary track for True Romance and it's fucking great because Tarantino can really talk. Oh yeah, he can. And hearing him just go on this whole thing about the movie and telling the history of it, it's it's fascinating. But I really I'm a big fan of podcasts and uh, uh, audio books and radio in general. So I guess I guess that's why I like commentaries. I really like listening to people talk about stuff through audio. Where I don't have to really look at anything. Uh, but I listen – every time I get a movie, I watch the movie, and then nine times out of ten, I'll listen to the commentary to hear, uh, you know, how they made the movie. And uh, some of them some of them suck. Some of them are really boring. It's just some guy sitting there not really – just being really, like, just explaining shit to you. Not even – some of them are hilarious. They're like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he does the commentary track for, like, Conan the Barbarian or uh, – we keep bringing that up tonight. Uh, That's a or, great movie. Or a Total Recall, all he does is sit there and explain the scene to you that you're about to see, and he adds nothing to it. Like, the Total Recall commentary, he goes, Oh, this is great. This is the scene where they think I'm this woman, but I'm not. I'm inside her. It's a robot costume thing. See? Watch. <laughs> Aha. See, I did it there. This is the scene where I use the guy's body as a shield. And he does that for the entire track. That's awesome. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> He just, the governor. There, he just sits there and tells you what's going to happen in the scene, and then you watch it Spoiler happen. Spoiler alert! And then he just laughs. He just laughs in that Arnold Schwarzenegger way. And I'm like, dude, please do a commentary for Batman and Robin. This is when I tell a really bad joke. Ah! It's hilarious. This is when I tell a really bad joke again. Batman ah. and Robin. That movie was so horrible, I, I like blocked it from my memory. I'm sorry I brought it back. <laughs> like, <dumb> flashbacks. <laughs> you remember sitting in the theater? You're just oh. like, oh, God. That was awful. Um, Willem, oh. De- Willem Dafoe and Platoon's death I always thought was badass. He puts this his ar- true. He puts his arms up in the air. The blood packs didn't go off, but they still kept the scene because it was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Willem Dafoe's on his knees and that music's playing. He's like, oh, He's getting shot the fuck up by a bunch of Vietnamese. <laughs> it's just like that. Platoon's a, Platoon's a phenomenal movie. Oh, every death in that movie kicks ass. Every death in that movie kicks ass. Um. Oh, here's a death that was was haunting. Back to Full Metal Jacket when they kill that little girl sniper. Yeah, that scene screwed up. That that's yeah. that's probably the like the top, if not the top, it's probably the greatest sniper sequence ever put to film. I don't know. Kind of makes me want to reenact scenes from Platoon with Charlie Sheen. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go into a Turkish bathhouse. Reena- I I want to reenact certain scenes from Platoon with Charlie Sheen, but not the ones where he shoots anybody. Even though that's like eighty percent of Platoon is shooting people. Um. Oh fuck! Apocalypse Now when Martin Sheen goes and takes out Marlon Brando and the, uh... the, the end is playing. The end is playing and Martin Sheen comes out of the fucking water. 
all painted up. <laughs> and he's like kills Brando. Brando said, and then he's like the horror, the horror. <laughs> you can't tell me that's not one of the coolest things. For... <laughs> that death kicks all kinds of ass. Brando's you know? got Brando's got a lot of the good deaths. The Godfather with the orange in his mouth. <laughs> That's pretty badass. Uh, Fredo's death in Godfather Part Two, where Michael, you know, sends him out in the boat. That's pretty fucked up too. Basically, if you're in a movie with Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Marlon Brando, there's going to be a cool death scene. Oh yeah. That's why Meet the Parents has some of my favorite death scenes of all time. What was I doing? I don't know. I'm still trying to find a good Baby Spice background. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many. You don't even understand. <laughs> um, I think I might settle on this one, though. You know, I'm just just saying. How did I get to some chick with titties that's named as Sarah? I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't even know. Now they're just messing with my, my Google search. With a burning heart. Oh, we have a Photoshop naked baby spice, which I mean, I approve. Yeah, it's like when Scott tried to convince us that that Katy Perry was real, and I was like, "That's not real." That was awful. He was an older generation. Apparently, I'm in an area where there's just anal sex going on now. There's some pictures of Baby Spice, but you know, there's just there's there's a lot of anal sex going on here. I think I found my background. I'm good. Anal sex is not my thing. <laughs> oh no, if Baby Spice asked, you would say yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Although something feels wrong about it because her name's Baby Spice. Um, I could ignore it because she's like 31. That's true. She's not young. She's definitely not a baby. I think she's 31. That sounds right to me. Oh, sorry, 36. Oh, damn, she's she's older than I thought she was. I'm pretty sure she's actually the oldest Spice Girl. Oh, there's a great death scene. I totally forgot about that one. Okay. What? Yeah. Do you guys watch the original RoboCop? Many times. When RoboCop gets killed? Not when RoboCop gets killed. When That's cop- a bad one. The guy who just went into the toxic waste and gets run over by the car and just, like, splatters everywhere. You still, you don't think it's great when they shoot the fuck out of the guy when he becomes RoboCop? Well, what that's they, a great scene, too, but okay. I love oh, the toxic waste guy. No, no, that's great, the toxic waste guy, because, yeah, he, get, he like, he the truck wrecks into a, a thing of toxic waste, and he comes out, and he's all mutated. Yep. And he's like, oh. No, but when they shoot rope, when they shoot Peter Weller up in that movie, they are so brutal. They shoot his arms yeah. off. Um, it was it was awful. Uh, every I feel like a dumbass for saying that she was the oldest because obviously Baby Spice means youngest. <laughs> right? When you said that, I was thinking, really? Were they just were the Spice Girls just being ironic? Listen, I, you know what? I, it's been a it's been an odd day for me. So step off. It's been My an nuts. odd day for all, sir. Um, no, speaking of that, you made me think of one. Uh, pretty much every death in the thing. The Kurt Russell movie. There you go. Every Bambi's death... mom gets killed. That's a that's one. I forgot about that one. Oh, Bambi's mom. Or Mufasa. God, Mufasa. Mufasa. There you go. I just watched The Lion King the other day. Any Disney movie where they kill off somebody important? <laughs> yeah. Muf- Mufasa's the really sad one though, because like little Simba's like, "Wake up, Dad." Uh-uh. Oh, that scene was awesome. Did you guys watch the 1997 flick, The Cube? Yeah. The guy who gets cubed. Yeah, <laughs> that one was I mean, pretty. Um. Uh, shit. I was thinking of one. Uh, oh, did you ever see Big Trouble in Little China? Yo, yeah. Do you remember when? Um, God, I can't remember the main bad guy when he throws the knife at Kurt Russell. Oh, Pan. Oh, Pan. Kurt Russell catches the knife and throws it back and hits him in the head. Yup. All. In the- you know, there's a recent one we're leaving out of here. What? Happened? Rorschach. Oh yeah, do it. Oh, but that's not even recent. That that's from old awful. school. That's well, awful. yeah. I mean, I guess the comic. <laughs> but we were we were talking movies, so yeah, I, I threw that, it in the movie loop. Yeah, that happened back in '86. But I, because I, I actually just watched the YouTube clip of it again the other day, and I was just like, God, you know, it's his acting. You, in get, that you scene. get so much emotion out of him in that last couple of minutes. Because Jackie or Haley looks just like Clint Eastwood in that movie. He really <laughs> does. He even talks like he's like, do it. Do it. <laughs> and you're like, shit, do it. Uh, yeah, that that is a pretty brutal one. Yeah, I, th- I think Rorschach's is definitely an intense death. 
Um, hmm. Uh, do me think here. Uh. Oh, The Shining had some good ones. That's another. The Shining one. only has one death scene, though. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scatman Crothers, Hong Kong Fooey gets axed by Jack Nicholson. That's like the one death scene in the in the whole movie. He comes back. He comes back all the way to the hotel to help the family, and he gets killed in the first five minutes. He comes back. You guys there? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes, I'm here. I'm here. I was like Hong Kong Fooey got killed by Jack Nicholson. What the hell? <laughs> My favorite part of that. Oh, the scene where the gun goes off in the car in Pulp Fiction. That's an awesome oh, death scene. You're right. Or when the little kid in uh, in Planet Terror and Grindhouse, the mom leaves the car, and then the kid shoots himself in the face. <laughs> She's like, be careful with that gun. And then she leaves and she hears a gut chunk goes back and he shot himself in the face. She's like, wow, that kid really didn't listen at all. Um... Yeah, you're right, the Pulp Fiction one, that's awesome. I just shot Marvin in the face. <laughs> yep. Is it an accident? Of course it was an accident. <laughs> it's funny you guys say that, because my Pulp Fiction poster is right in front of my computer. It's just so shocking when that happens, that when he shoots Marvin in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's to- totally not expected. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> they're just having a conversation, and then bam. And, they, and it's their reactions to it, it's like it didn't even matter. Did we mention Ned at all here? We mentioned him earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I must have walked away or Sean, something. Sean Bean dies in every movie. Um. Uh, oh, we forgot. We forgot Greedo. We forgot Greedo. Greedo's. The, well, they keep, <laughs> they keep changing that one up so much that I don't even yeah. know what happens anymore. <laughs> it, I don't know. I don't know if Greedo shot or. Uh, I don't even know anymore. I just gave up. Um. I was trying to think of a sacrificial death or the something. The number one death on this guy's list is Bill in Kill Bill Volume 2? I hated that death. That was I, so lame! Because you watched you watched four hours of movie to just see him get hit with a fucking fist thing, and then he walked off and died after five steps. Yep. I was like, kiss my ass. Oh, let's talk about shitty deaths. How about Darth Maul and, and Phantom Menace? Oh, that was he's, pretty shitty. He's a total badass, and then he lets Obi-Wan just jump over him and cut him Hey, he's out. not dead, so it doesn't matter. Oh, I'll even name a better one. Boba Fett in Return of the Jedi. Oh, he's not dead either. He flies out. Right. Yeah. He's got Darth Maul the- does not die, and neither does Boba. No. Boba Fett, so, or, or uh, you know, when the dude dies in Jurassic Park with the raptors, he's supposed to be this badass hunter, and his first time he goes up against a raptor, he turns his head, and he's like, clever girl. <laughs> the other raptor, they just eat the shit out of him. It's like, wow, dude, you You're really. Great. Oh, Quint, Quint and Jaws. He's supposed to kill the shark, and he's the only one that gets eaten. This is true. I love that Quint's like, I'll kill the shark. I'm like, wow. <laughs> and he's like, Cage going water, you going water, and you're like, man, Quint's gonna kill this shark. And then as soon as the shark attacks the boat, he eats Quint. I'm like, dude, you really, you didn't deliver what you were supposed to. <laughs> That wasn't what was supposed to happen at all. This, this, this is irony. <laughs> <laughs> irony. Um. Yeah, I do love that when, like, you expect somebody to have like a really awesome thing happen, and then they just die, and you're like, oh. <laughs> well, that didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. I thought you were supposed to be a badass. Ah. Uh, Trying to think of some other ones. Oh, well, we've named a lot actually in the last like ten minutes. Uh, we were making up for that awful beginning where we didn't name any death at all. <laughs> we were just talking about random shit. Let's see. Oh, oh, I got. I mean, I thought one of the best ones, Drew Barrymore, at the opening scene of Scream. Oh, that was awesome. Because that, that's like the first twenty minutes of the movie. He calls her on the phone and he screws with her for the whole time, and then yep. he's slowly like getting her, and then she gets. She could, then you think she's gonna get away, and there's that scene where she turns the lights on and she sees her boyfriend's like guts all ripped out. <laughs> that scene's amazing. Yeah, Scream was awesome. It that, actually it, it revitalized the horror genre for me because horror had gotten so stupid. Because it had a sense of humor about it. It was so self-aware. Yep. And that opening scene is a perfect like it's one of the best directed like horror scenes I've ever seen in a movie. It's so fucking scary. 
And yet it's like funny at the same time. It's really hard to explain. Like it's a cliche scene, but they make it aware that it's cliche. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, God, that opening scene. Every time I watch an opening scene, I get chills because it's so terrifying. Somebody could call you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> They're outside. Like because of that movie, caller ID sales literally went up three hundred percent after that movie came out. Three hundred percent. All because I believe of me. it. Because we were all so scared. We were like, well, fuck, I got to know who's calling me now. You know, before that, you never worried about who called. We was like, oh, this guy's calling me. He's going to kill me. I need to see. Man. Uh, I don't answer private numbers, but it's not because I think it's a killer trying to kill me. I think it's because I think it's a bill collector trying to get paid. That, that's, <laughs> that's just as bad, though. <laughs> yeah, Wouldn't it be it great if we parodied the opening to Scream, but it was a bill collector? <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your current service provider? <laughs> Quit calling me. I'm making popcorn. <laughs> if you hang up again... I'm going to I'm going to keep calling you and I'm going to take your rates through the, like a gut fish. Leave me alone. <laughs> we can help you consolidate your loans. <laughs> your boyfriend's outside. He just signed a deal. No. You turn on the light. He's got a contract in his hand. Oh god. Oh man. That's hilarious actually. Like I would All the screen movies had great deaths. Like remember the second one they killed uh, Will Smith's wife in the theater? And her boyfriend, he gets killed in the bathroom. He, like, puts his ear up against the stall. And that knife just stabs through. Oh, <laughs> uh, when Kevin Bacon gets the arrow through the neck in the first Friday the 13th movie. Because it's Kevin Bacon. Dude, I remember one of the Friday the 13th movies. He takes, you know, those uh, lopper things that you use for trimming bushes? Yeah. Shoves them in the dude's eye sockets and... Cut cuts between like the yeah. bridge, the nose. Oh, I think I can one up you though on a couple. The one where he picks up the sleeping bag and just bangs it up against a tree, and it's got the girl in it. Oh, oh that's a good one. Yeah. And then when he's fighting the dude in a Jason in Manhattan, and the dude is a boxer, and he keeps beating the shit out of Jason, and then Jason just punches his head off. Yeah, that one was that, that <laughs> was <pretty> cliche. <laughs> the dude's just punching the shit out of him, and then Jason just looks at him and then just punches his head off. Kapow. But I love that. He picks up the sleeping bag with the girl. She's like, what the hell is going on? And he just bashes the sleeping bag up against the fucking wall. Um, I don't know if oh. one of you have ever seen it. There's this movie called Brain Dead. Brain Dead. Where that sounds this, very familiar. This guy's got this like uh, this little creature that gives him drugs, like this insect that gets him high, and it attaches to the back of his neck. Hmm. And it's like a little slug creature. And there's a scene where this girl's like going to give him a blowjob, and the creature slugs its way down to his pants and pops out. Like his penis sticks <laughs> sticks itself in her mouth and sucks her brains out through her mouth, and you nice. see. Nice. It is. It is. I've showed that death scene to a few people, and it is nasty. It's pretty hardcore. That sounds pretty freaking hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Did you not? What, expect I want that happen. slug. Wait. Does does the slug wait for me to come before he sucks the brain out, or does the slug? You, got, you gotta see this movie. This movie is insane. Because <laughs> it talks, the little slug creature, and it's really intelligent. It's got, like, a really intelligent voice and, like, says really funny things, but it's really evil. It's voiced by, I think, I think his name was Soupy Swells. Was the name? Soupy Sales? Soupy Sales, yeah, he used to do the voice. He used to, like, host horror stuff, and he does the voice of the creature. Oh. It, it's really funny. It's a Soupy really. Soupy Sales is the guy who. Uh, told all of the watchers he was a, a kid's show personality? Yeah, yeah, he does the voice. It's directed by the same guy who directed the movie Basket Case, where the guy's got the, his brother in the basket. Uh, that's the, like the creature that was attached to him. Yeah, really fun movie, Brain Dead. Uh, that's definitely one of the best death scenes I've ever but seen. Those. On the list yeah, of movies I haven't seen and should. Yeah, Brain Dead and Brain Damage... Brain, you know, brain damage and basket case. Those are the ones you got to see. Those are both the be- like two of the best yeah, movies. Yeah. Uh, are you still there, George? Or are you still baby spicing it out? I'm here. Oh, I didn't know. Well, you know what? I said I didn't want to make this too long, so we've gone almost a hundred minutes. I'm ready to end this one. Let's let's. We end. have gone a hundred minutes. Yeah. We don't want Very to. Drag- good. Yeah. Let's not drag this one out. Yes. Let's stop over ahead. Let's not. If we think any new deaths that we have to bring up, we'll 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 just mention them at the beginning of the next episode. We will, let's not promise anybody a Chinese democracy. 
and then they, they Ew. and they won't then they'll just be disappointed years later. On an ending note, I have pre-ordered the gigantic deluxe box set of the new Coheed and Cambria album, double album actually. Nice. Good for you, sir. Oh yeah. All right, people. Well, that I did it while we were recording. That does it for Geek Meets World episode twenty-one. We've made it, man. We're past the twenty mark now. We're like, yeah, we're all grown. Yay. We can drink now. <laughs> we we can drink on the podcast now, even though that's pretty much what we've all been doing since the beginning. Uh, you know, I've never I've never drank during I'm, the podcast. I'm drinking a Coors right now while we're doing this podcast. This is this is uh, you know, I have. I drank the last one. I have not drank this one, but uh, I wanted to. I just figured I wouldn't make you guys wait any longer while I, I went thought, and got beer. I thought that was going to be the reverse. I thought when George said, I've never drank on a podcast, I thought Wayne was going to say, I've never not drank on a podcast. <laughs> well, this is the first time. Well, you know, I've only done this. is only second, but. <laughs> you're, you're, you're off on your All right, we caught you off guard. I did just ask you today. Yeah. <laughs> or, or was it last night? No, it was today, I'm pretty sure. No, well, I messaged you last night, but you didn't get back to me till today. Oh huh. wait, no, we talked about the wait. No, we talked about the podcast yesterday on last night. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew about it last night. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're talking we talked about, about it until like three in the morning. Yes, we did. We should have just recorded that and <laughs> been done with it. <laughs> I know. Last night we had just we talked about the we talked about interesting stuff. Listen, wait. During Game of Thrones season, me and Randy record like twice a week. Yeah, when Game of Thrones is on, we start getting hardcore, because we have to record a Game of Thrones episode, then we have to record a normal episode. <laughs> oh, and get ready for football season. Football season? What Geek's got to do with football? Well, okay, we, we think that Geek just means that you're passionate about something where you become obsessed with it, and you know the details, so we think that football falls into the category. Oh, and you guys are football football. geeks. I got you. Yeah. NFL season. And <laughs> I know you do too, Wayne. I'm not a geek for football. I, I watch, like, one game a year. Are you serious? I'm he's serious. He's going to have to put I up. I thought you liked football. Hey, hey, George, did you see my thing? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's a Steelers fan. Uh, shut the fuck up. I put up the commercial. So the Paul Rudd scale. Fucking Steelers. Changed a little bit. <laughs> Keep on the Jets are going to take it. Yeah, that's. You know what? Yeah. I, I would love to see that happen. <laughs> Tebow and the Jets. T- Planes have got on their side. Did, did you see? You saw that when I put that video up with the song "Tebow and the Jets." <laughs> Tebow, Tebow and the Jets. Awesome. Yeah, I know. And every time they say that, I read it in a magazine. They show a picture of him on Sports Illustrated. Um. All right, but that does it for episode twenty-one. Once again, it was great What's to up, have. It? it was great to have Wayne on. Always a great. A good yeah, great guy to have on, and. uh I'm sorry. No, if, don't act like we're not a permanent member now. He's here. Well, I know. It's just, <laughs> you, what you have to do, you're a permanent member of this podcast. He's still in the early days, though, is all I'm saying. Uh, we got you on contract. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Suck a dick. Yeah, you signed your soul to us. I'm sorry. If if you don't do podcasts, we, we do get everything you own. <laughs> I, I call his wife. <laughs> And I really don't. I really don't want to take care of kids that aren't mine. I'll, I'll let you keep the kids. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really see the point of me watching somebody's kids that are not my kids. It's just a waste of time. It's like, oh, okay. It's a little fucked up to even you say, should, but whatever. You should just be back with your father. There's no reason for you to be hanging out with me. Man. I, I, I'm really just gonna sit here and eat Cheetos and watch TV. You're like, well, that's what Daddy did. Oh, well. Cheetos are delicious. With them. Cheetos are delicious, young ladies. Um, I was eating Cheetos today, and they were wonderful. Cheetos are Should wonderful. we just stop this recording? Oh, Holy I, shit. I, I need to stop. All right, I'm stopping now. Okay, I found the movie that you're talking about. Brain Damage. Got it.